<clears throat> okay, Epic Rides Analysis. <clears throat> I wanted to check out some of the hilly stages that's coming up in the Tour de France, starting tomorrow, um, the stage to Le Crusoe. Um, it isn't listed as a mountain stage, but it has a category three, four, four, and two climb. And it is the longest stage of the tour at over 150 miles. So this one's gonna be a bruiser for sure. Uh, even before they get to the categorized climbs here, you can see it's quite lumpy. And over the course of uh, 150K, these lumps, even though they don't look like anything significant, that's probably gonna add up to, to quite a bit of climbing. And then you have these hills here, which uh, none of them look that steep. But I wanted to point out that the second to last climb has a descent in it. So um, just so you know, the, the whole average percent is very deceptive because if the, the approach is easy and then there's a downhill, the last half could be very hard. So this one is the highest category of the day as a category two. And I don't think the stage is going to shake things up that much, but an important factor that um, people may not be mentioning is that this stage is going to add to a lot of fatigue in the legs, probably over 12,000 feet of climbing and 150 miles in this part of France might start to get warm. So far it's been rainy. So um, irregardless though, or regardless, I suppose irregardless is not a real word. <laughs> My mom told me that yesterday. Um, it's going to be a really tough stage and it's going to tire out the legs. It should be an exciting stage, probably not for general classification, but for breakaways. So um, you see, we have that there and boom, we get right into the Alps. So let's see what we have on tap in the Alps. And one of the things that people have criticized about this year's tour route is the downhill finishes. Now I have a different perspective on that. Uh, on this stage, which is going to have a lot of altitude gain, especially at the end, we have one, two, three category one climbs getting up to uh, over 5,000 feet. So the air is starting to get a little thin and that's going to affect fatigue a bit. It's a short stage. It should be uh, short. It's under 100 miles. Um, so it's going to be faster. Um, we'll see how the temperatures are. If it's hot, it's brutal. If it's wet, it's super dangerous. Um, there's kind of no winning in the Alps. <laughs> um, yeah, so this stage has a long gradual downhill and then a flat bit in the finish. It's not that people can't make up time on a stage like this, but it's, it's relatively early in the tour, even though fatigue is accumulating. Uh, people are less likely going to be going for time, going for big attacks because they'll wait till or deeper in the mountains and people are getting more and more fatigued. And given that it looks like they climb the steeper side and then descend a more gradual slope and then have a little flat bit, especially if there's a little bit of a wind, it's really gonna deter people from trying to, to solo away or get away in small groups. So I would imagine we'll see somewhat of a large group finishing on this stage, but the stage should be fun to watch. It's always beautiful in the Alps and it's exciting when they get to the mountains after they haven't been yet. So the following day we have our first uh, mountaintop finish. We've had some uphill finishes um, but those hills have just been you know a couple miles. This is a solid 21k climb with an average of 5.6 percent. Important to note the Col de Pre is an HC. This is a very steep climb it has a lot of hairpin bends. It's very beautiful, very exposed. If it's hot, it's going to be a baker on that. They get up to a nice lake, which is really beautiful, do a little downhill, and then come up to um, above 6,000 feet here. And they're also finishing, um, you know, at about 6,500 feet or over 2,000 meters, which is providing a thin air atmosphere. So 5.6%, it's an easy average grade relatively speaking but look at this big flat bit in the middle you can see that it's a little bit steeper there's a little flat bit kicks up again there's another flat bit so this last portion 
is going to be harder than what the typical grade is. And then it looks like they have about a K uh, just to sort of roll into the town of the ski resort there. So that should be interesting. We'll see how that plays out. Again, people might be keeping the powder dry, although given the, the nature of the early time trial, people have to attack in this tour. And so it'll be interesting to see how that goes. <clears throat> All right, moving on. This stage is not listed as a mountain stage. Yes, and it just has some hills. You have to keep, you have to keep an eye out. They have these little mountain uh, indicators on this website. I'm on steep hill and some of the hilly stages or even outright mountain stages don't have that. So keep an eye out for that. So on to the Mont Ventoux. Okay, so the first time, I, th I believe this is the first time the tour is doing two ascents of the Montu, which is very exciting. They're doing a downhill into the town of Melissian. Now, <clears throat> I've done this climb from Melissian up the untraditional route, and I really think that's the best way to climb it. I would love to see the tour go up from there. Um, you have kind of an easy bit in the middle, and then you have a 3K or almost 4K ascent of averaging 11%, and then it flattens off just for a sec, and then it's still pretty hard to the top. It's less windy, it's more wooded, there's more hairpins on this side of the climb. So if you wanna ride the Ventu and you don't have time to ride it from all directions, um, I highly recommend doing the, the side of, of Melissian. It's a really beautiful road and the wind um, can really ruin the experience on the traditional side that they do. Now, <clears throat> this year, they're doing a pre-climb that leads them to sort of this plateau and then the long, most gradual route up the Ventoux, which is still gonna be tough. It's 22 Ks of climbing, averaging 5%. And the altitude with minimal veg vegetation is going to exhaust the riders. And often it's very hot in this part of Provence leading into the, the Alps. The, the Ventoux is actually technically a foothill of the Alp. It's ironic. It's, it's one of the biggest climbs in France, but it's technically part of the foothills of the Alps. Um, and as you see, they do the traditional route from Bedouin um, up to the top, averaging over 8%, and then they're going to bomb down this downhill. Now, getting back to the uh, concept of the downhills being boring for the finishes or not creating an exciting or perhaps um, uh, opportunistic uh, finish for getting time gaps. Uh, in the previous one I showed, I agree with that. In this one, this is such a hard climb. I think you're gonna see attacks earlier to try and get some time over the top. Now a good descender will be able to bomb down this and you can see there is no flat. They're gonna go right into town and right to the stage victory, which is gonna be very exciting. There's more hairpins, there's a lot of trees, so the wind won't be that much of a factor. And it's a technical downhill, it's very steep and very fast. So I think there's gonna be an exciting finish um, there's also a little climb, everything adds up. Remember, I've done this road um, when I, I started, I think I started over here and did this climb and climbed up the backside the one time I did the Ventoux. I was just there for a couple of days. It is such a great region. I wanna show you, <clears throat> uh, let's see if I can find the map here. Okay, so this is the region. Here is the course. You can see lots of twists and turns. They do the first category one climb that leads them up to the plateau. They're doing a smaller, more twisty road to get up to the Ventoux. They do the Ventoux, they do the downhill. And then this is very small and very technical road that they're taking to get back to the base of the Ventoux and, or to get back to Bedouin. And then they go up the Ventoux. This has a straighter, steeper bit to it. And then they get to the windy slopes at the top and then back down the downhill. So they will see the downhill twice, which will hopefully help them have a safe finale. Um, yet we'll I'm sure still expect to see some crashes as seems to be the theme of this tour. Uh, and after that, we are moving on to the Pyrenees. So we have 
a bunch of stages in the Pyrenees. And the first stage is a lumpy one with no category one climbs, but a lot of steep ones. Here's a 9% climb. This is nearly 9%. The last climb is at seven and a half. And like I said, with the percentages, seven and a half could mean that it's 2% for a mile or two and then 10% to the top. So these are not high altitude. The roads might be kind of melty. If it's hot, it should be brutal. Very fatiguing, not a good stage for taking time gaps. As you see, there's a long downhill and a very gradual slight downhill flat at the end, but nonetheless, a stage that's gonna add up and really tax the legs, especially as they get to the high altitudes of Andorra. The highest altitudes they do are in the Pyrenees, even though the Alps tend to have higher altitude roads, which is interesting. So as you see, they've got some lumps and bumps and then a bunch of category one climbs. Another downhill finish. Now it looks like they're descending the gradual sign of the gradual side of this final climb, um, but there's not a flat bit. They go right down to the finish, so that's helpful. And these roads in Andorra um, tend to be very switchbacky, very narrow, very technical. As you can see, this climb is nearly 9% average grade. So they're gonna have a very steep technical downhill after climbing the highest point in uh, the tour, which is in Andorra at Port de Anvalira. And yeah, this day looks like a beast. It's gonna be probably about 15,000 feet climbing with multiple times uh, um, up to six and even 7,500 feet. So an exhausting one, uh, 120 miles, and we'll see what the weather is. In Andorra, it could be uh, blistering hot and then 1,000 feet gain, you might have hail or something like that. So definitely an exciting stage in spite of the downhill finish. This stage is not listed as a mountain stage, but oh, what do we have here? Mountains. We have a category two climb that's long. We have a category one climb that looks reasonably hard. Uh, the Porte de Aspe, it's short. And again, 7%, but I'm not sure when they start to measure it. Do they measure it from here? And then they have this flat bit. I've ridden the Porte de Aspe and it is very steep, very, very steep. It's a horrific road to, to climb and descend. There was somebody who died there in the 1995 tour, unfortunately, Fabio Casertelli, I believe his name was. There's a beautiful monument um, to him. I think it's on the Aspe side um, that they put near where he perished. They put it off the side of the road so that people um, would not stop and then get hit by a car where he perished and continue the legacy. Uh, anyway, this stage will be a great stage for breakaway riders. You can see there's a lot of downhill, a little bump here, and then a flat finish but again continuing with the exhaustion it's 100 miles plus and that part of the Pyrenees is likely to be very hot however it could instantly rain so either way weather is going to be a factor now here is the queen stage to the highest um, mountaintop finish of this year's tour the Col de Portet <clears throat> you have rolling roads lumps and bumps leading to 70 miles in to the town of Bagnères de Luchon. is a beautiful spa town that has wonderful mineral baths and a steam cave uh, that was established by the Romans. It's really cool, awesome town to visit. There's uh, so many coals and uh, uh, dead-end ski resort roads that you can ride there. And the most famous of them all is probably the Pyrrhosword, which is a cool climb. Definitely not the best in the area, but it's one worth riding. And it's tough. It gains uh, about 3,000 feet, averages 7%. It's 5,000 feet at the top. So just enough to feel that the air is thin. They've got kind of a little bit of a lumpy valley here. And they do the Col d'Azé, which is very, very beautiful. Also very hard. Wonderful steep switchbacks. Um, really nice vistas. I think the nicest views are from the side they descend. I've climbed it from saint Lary, and I really, really enjoyed that road. As you can see, it's over 8% average. It's not super long. It's about four and a half miles, but it's a tough one. 
high enough to feel the altitude. And then you have this climb that's 16K, 8.7% average. And it goes up to the ski resort of the Plata Day, but instead of turning onto the Plata Day, they continue on what used to be a goat track. Now it's paved the Col de Portet. And it's got about two hairpins in that first 10K to Plata Day. Mostly it's a very straight road. I stayed in Saint Laurie once. I did not ride this road just because it looked so straight and boring. I didn't realize it wasn't paved at the time that there is a very hairpinny uh, road that leads to really high altitude. This is above 7,000 feet and it is steep the whole way. There's no easy bits, there's no rest. And once you get above 5,000 feet, you're struggling to breathe with the thin air. So they did this stage, it's virtually an identical stage. They did the Pirigud, which is a little extra climbing uh, when they did that uh, 60K stage with these last three climbs. This is going to be about 115 miles and it has a long lumpy roll up. So it's going to be an endurance test. It's coming late in the tour as well. So look to this stage to see some big time gaps, see people uh, laying down the, their Hail Marys. There's going to be one more opportunity, which is a shorter stage, but probably equally brutal leading up to Luzard Den. Uh, as you can see, just a few lumps and bumps, category four, category four uh, undulations in between. And then I'm not sure when they count the kilometers from the Tour Malay, they have 17 Ks, which is a little over 10 miles. But as you can see, it's going uphill, uphill, uphill for quite a long ways in the valley before you get to the proper climb leading to above, um, to nearly 7,000 feet. It's actually just a few, uh, feet shy of that, but it's a steep climb and they, I think they're doing the steeper side. Um, yeah, the Luz Saint Souver is supposed to be longer and not as hard. So they're going to pass La Mangie, the big ski resort. This is a brutal climb. It's really beautiful mountain scenery at the top, but people who go to the, the Pyrenees often say they like the smaller roads, roads like the, um, uh, the Portillon or um, uh, what's the one? Uh, the Port de Valais, very nice climb out of Luchon area. Uh, this is kind of a ski resort highway. There's not that many twists and turns. It's a big road. There's a big ski resort and the, the ski resort sort of lifts, which is kind of ugly in the mountains. Uh, but the last bit is really beautiful and it's definitely a road worth riding, but just be prepared. You might much prefer, say a road, for instance, like the road to Luz Den. It's uh, eight miles, seven and a half percent average. It's an HC climb, uh, just high enough altitude to feel it, about 50, 55, 5,600 feet. And it's got 30 hairpin bends. So it's, it's really awesome. It's a dead end road at the ski resort. However, you could go up about three quarters of the way on a small road and descend it if you hate dead end roads. Um, yeah, I have not yet ridden this, but it's on my list. I really, really want to, and it is definitely a road that has seen some epic drama in the tour. And I think this year will be no exception. So we'll see what the weather's like. Um, given the nature of the time trials and that people are gonna be having to attack, we might see some attacks on the Tour Malay see if people can break things up, do some Hail Marys leading toward the end. They're gonna to have to maybe have some teammates up the road in breaks that will help them on the downhill. Uh, because this Tourmalet is a less switchbacky road, it's extremely fast downhill. They set record speeds on this, like 70 miles per hour. Um, wear your helmet, <laughs> bit of a flat stretch. And then they have this eight mile climb to the finish. And that is going to be the last mountain stage of the tour. I believe this stage doesn't have that much. And then they have the time trial before the stage in Paris. So lots of exciting mountains, lots of nuances. I don't think the downhill finishes are going to um, be as bad as some people claim. I do prefer uphill finishes, but I think it's cool that they're doing the Ventoux. The area of the Ventoux, again, um, I pointed out the squiggliness, the small roads, this is called Col de Madeleine here, this tiny little fourth category climb. Uh, it's not the same Madeleine as the, the gigantic 25K 
8% average climb in the Alps. But um, this area is a really fantastic area to visit. Look at all these squiggly roads here. Look at all these different coals and, and just different routes. There's um, Gorge de la Nesque. I think that's uh, around here or so. Um, it's an amazing place to ride. Weather's great. There's beautiful vineyards. So get excited for um, thinking about maybe making some trips over to, to Europe. If you haven't ridden there, it's definitely worthwhile. And uh, hit me up if you have any questions about riding. I've ridden a lot in the Pyrenees, but I've also done the Dolomites and the Alps. And one time on a fateful day in August, I did the Mont Ventoux and it was very hard. Um, anyway, I'll be doing some more of these. I've got some reviews coming up of bike products and I'll continue with the cycling blog. So thanks for checking in with Mr. G and look forward to uh, sharing some more epic rides. Ciao for now.